Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors, Restorers, Appreciators. Hey, uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about vacuum tubes. Um, I've got quite a few vacuum tubes. I don't know, like quite a few bins, I don't know, maybe about 30 bins like this sorted out from the last time I moved. And the types of tubes I have, I have for whatever reason tons of 6v6 power tubes. The one thing I don't have a lot of are 7591s and uh, those, this is what kind of kicked me on to doing this video, okay? Um, just the whole state of tube audio. Now Tube musical instrument amps are a little bit of a different thing, but they share similarities. Here's one thing I've noticed. There's tons of reproduction tubes out there. I have very few reproduction tubes. Most of the stuff I have is new old stock. Every single one of these I've tested before I put it in a bin. Even the ones that are pullouts. Um... I rarely buy new stock tubes. Now, if you look, of course, if you buy a new Fender or a new Trainer, a tube one, it has new tubes. Some of them are Chinese, some of them are JJ Tesla. There's a whole variety of reproduction tubes out there. And they usually fall along the lines of the 5U4, the 12AX7, and other tubes in that series, and 6V6s, 6BQ5s. Outside of that realm, there's less available. And this is what I'm noticing. I've been hanging on very tightly to my tube collection because it's dwindling. I've been lucky enough to find in the last couple years, I occasionally find at a flea market or something like that, a big box of tubes. And, and usually I can get them very cheap. The last one I think was $60 and it was a Zenith Repairman's Caddy filled with tubes. And uh, unfortunately a lot of them are TV tubes or they're there's a whole bunch of 12AX7s and 12AU7s. They're all Rogers brand, which is a Canadian brand. Um, tons of those, which are great for audio or for musical instrument amps. But this one thing I'm noticing, um, for instance, two of the Heathkit models, the AA23 and AA100, use 7591s. And there's a bunch of those floating around on eBay. And they're either being sold as a chassis only with the tubes gone, or the 7591s are missing. Why are they missing? Well, people are pulling them out for other projects. They've used up their stock. And I used to have, I would say at one point, uh, maybe 20 years ago, I had 8 or 10 7591s. They were all Raytheon 7591A, 7591As, I believe. And I've used them up in different repairs and restorations. And any of the collections that i bought since, they're picked clean of those tubes. The 7199 is a bit like that too, which is, you know, a 9-pin, like a 12AX7. And I know the way things are being sold on eBay, people are going for the, they're either parting them out, rarely selling them as a complete union, especially if they have unobtainium or near unobtainium tubes. So I was looking for a pair of 7199s for an AA23 amp. It's not one that I covered um, in a video, it was uh, one I did a little while ago. It had everything going for it. Completely recap, but uh, no 71, 7591s in it. it. Takes two of them. I have been looking for months. And what happens is, there's people I know, I send them an email or give them a phone call and I say, do you have any? No, I don't have any of those anymore. And if I did, I'd be selling them on eBay because you can get so much money for them. Take a look at what new in the box, or new old stock 7591s are going for. And there's an inherent problem with them. That's why I brought these out. This is a Raytheon 6v6. 
most of the vintage 7591s are the octal short bottle type of tubes. Most of the reproductions are taller. And for instance, in the back of an AA23, you have about 3 inches of clearance. In an AA100, about 3 and 3 eighths inch of clearance. And there, about 3 and 7 eighths with the socket for the new one. So you'd actually have to cut a hole in the lid. And believe it or not, I've seen it done. I came across an AA100 around 2017, and they had actually cut channels. So you could slide the lid on and the the 7591 ones, their JJ Tesla ones, could stick up through the lid. I couldn't believe it. And the guy wanted about 400 bucks for it. He said it would be easy to find the lid. They're all over the place. Well, not really. And that's one of the things. Things are getting, in that vintage of stuff, they're getting hard to find. So if you're looking for tubes, and what happens, like you say, I put feelers out on these. I've been watching eBay too expensive um, and then a few months go by and people forget that you asked and it's understandable to get on to other things. Every tech that I know that's still doing this stuff is really busy and uh, so like they can help you if they've got something other than that forget about it. There's one guy I contacted I had, I had remembered had a house full of tubes and uh, just unbelievable and uh, we went back and forth and luckily the email still worked and uh, he said oh I've got some I just don't know where they are he said I have one match pair I remember testing them and matching them about 10 years ago and we settled on a, a much more reasonable price they were used and short bottle um, he said I used to have all kinds of these he said there's people asking for that tube. It's the number one tube that people ask for. And this is what I'm noticing. Just in stereo equipment in general, a general trend. The people that are buying vintage stereo to listen to and enjoy right now are almost overwhelmingly buying solid state 1970s components. The stuff I talked about, like I just did a couple of videos with a KA2000, and I actually have a KA2002, which is the next generation I'm going to do very soon, which is a great amp. And you can still find the reasonable prices. Um, I've had people here and they say, I say, um, you know, like, why did you pick this? Well, it was a reasonable price. It's almost number one. Number two is, I would like to get into tubes. The pricing is stupid. And this has happened with antique clocks. My father used to be a huge collector of antique clocks. Bought most of his stock 70s, 80s, into the early 90s. And the prices kept going up and up and up, especially on Arthur Paganot clocks. And we'd see them go at auction and you just go, $1,400 for one of those? you got to be kidding. Now the price is going but try to buy one. When you try to buy one, the few that come up for listed are still high prices, but they don't sell. It's because collectors paid too much for them and they're hanging on for dear life. The only ones that are a deal, unfortunately, are estate sales. When those go up for auction, it'll be a whole collection, and it, I find it's about 30 cents on the dollar, if that. Um, just maybe, I don't know what I'm talking about, and I can, I can see that happening with tube audio with the exception of musical instrument amps. Those, I think, will continue to go up, especially with all the reproduction stuff for them. It's, they're much easier to restore. Like a Fender Tweed, for example, and I've done a few of those. Crazy prices, okay? Let's not, let's not even go into that. But then I, the last one I did was a small Harmony, a four-tube amp. And it's a nice practice amp, but it also has great sound. Like if you if you want to mic the amp, people um, harmonica players actually really like those. I bought it for sixty dollars, and the cabinet was absolutely beautiful. I've been in a closet for years, and it took tubes that you could still get. Uh, fortunately for tube audio, things like the Dynaco SCA thirty five, which I really like, they've gone 
I'm seeing. I was just looking this morning. Bare chassis with no tubes and no faceplate, four hundred dollars U.S. It is absolutely not worth that. Go and buy yourself a solid state Sansui, Yamaha, Kenwood, Pioneer. Even though those are getting a bit expensive. Anyway, I was just doing. I'm actually looking for another tube for another project. But uh, thanks for watching and listening.